It was a stormy early morning on June 1st, 1773, in Cape Town, a Dutch settlement founded by the Dutch East India Company. Across the Atlantic Ocean the same year, Jean-Baptiste Pointe de Sable created a small town near a large lake called Chicago. In October, one of the Dutch East India Company's chief rivals, the British East India Company, lost shiploads of tea sent to the American colonies when a group protesting the British Parliament's Tea Act burned or chucked a lot into the harbor. In the colonies, it was a restless year, as if the world was holding its breath before the arrival of the storm of revolution. It is winter in June in the Southern Hemisphere. Cape Town, established in April 1652, was over 100 years old when the storm struck. The settlement was a hub of commerce used by the Dutch East India Company to reach the distant ports of India, Java, and Macau, and to bring back the precious spices used by Europeans to flavor and preserve food. One of the company's ships, the Yong Tomas, one of five ships anchored at Table Bay that stormy night, was filled with these spices, such as pepper, cloves, and nutmeg. In addition, the ship carried 270 men, women, and children. As the storm raged, waves struck the vessel, shaking it and disturbing its passengers, who spent a sleepless night in fear. The powerful storm tested the ropes, tying the young Tomas to its anchor, and soon it seemed that the rope would fail, leaving the ship to the mercy of the wind and the waves. Captain Barnard Lemarin of the young Thomas signaled for help by ordering the ship's cannon to fire shortly after midnight. When the relentless waves finally broke the ship from its moorings, and the ship's anchor began to drag along the bottom of the harbor. Le Marin was hoping the sound of the cannon would alert Cape Town's residents to their predicament. They would mount a rescue operation for the souls aboard the ship, as well as its cargo. Around 5 a.m., the storm wrenched the anchor from the ship and threw the vessel upon the rocky shore. Unfortunately for its passengers, the young Tomas landed near where the Salt River pours into Table Bay, creating nearly impassable rapids and raging surf. Only the strongest swimmers were able to defeat the current and safely reach shore. The rest were left clinging to the wreckage, praying for rescue. The residents of Cape Town had indeed heard Captain Lemarin's cannon, and Cape Town Governor Joaquin von Plettenberg sent 30 soldiers to the scene. They observed the dangerous tides and formed a line to hold back the curious who were beginning to form on the shore. Some had responded to the cannon's call to gawk, or in hopes of looting the cargo of the ship. Others wanted to assist in a rescue operation. The soldiers held all back, saying it was too dangerous to attempt anything. But one man would not be deterred. A 65-year-old dairyman of the Dutch East India Company named Volrad Voltamade pushed his way through the line of soldiers. One of Voltamade's sons, Corporal Christian Ludwig Voltamade, was among the group holding the others back from the shore. The elder Voltamade may have ridden his black stallion, Vonk, roughly translated to spark, to bring food or refreshment to his son. But when he saw the distress of the luckless souls of the wrecked ship, he threw off his shirt and rolled his horse into the raging surf. The wreck had begun to break apart, and the stranded men, women, and children were faced with the prospect of drowning in the freezing waters. Into the fray rolled Voltamade. Voltamade had immigrated from Schomburg in order to work as a soldier for the D Dutch East India Company prior to his time as a dairyman. As such, he was probably no stranger to dangerous waters. The first year of its operation, the Dutch East India Company lost two-thirds of its crews it sent out, and only one ship made it back to its own port. The Cape of Good Hope, near which Cape Town was built, was originally called Cabo das Tormentas, or Port of Storms, by Bartolomeu Dias, a Portuguese explorer. The ocean storms around the Cape were legend, and included among the tales of it is the haunting story of the ghost ship, the Flying Dutchman. King John II of Portugal renamed the place the Cape of Good Hope because of what that passage represented to his kingdom, the hope of safe passage to India and the Far East. But the June storm was taking the cape back to its original name as Voltamade rolled into its teeth. He tied some ropes to Vonk and swam the horse out to the beleaguered Yong Tomas. Grab the ropes and tail, he cried, and two men dead. Voltamade encouraged his stallion back to shore and delivered the grateful men to the arms of the wedding crowd. Then he turned around and did it again. And again. And again for hours, braving the ocean to rescue the helpless. After his first few rescue missions, the group on shore began begging Voltamade to stay on dry land. You've done enough, they said. It's too cold and dangerous. Stay here and rejoice with those you saved. Maybe Voltamade's son had a displeased to the general outcry, reminding his father of his own family and the wife for which he had to live back home. Voltamade turned his back on all and rode back into the ocean. By his seventh trip, he was exhausted. 
14 souls had been saved, Voltamati collapsed and prepared to rest when a loud crack was heard from the wreck, and screams rose from those still clinging to it. The young Tomas was on its last legs. Once more, Voltamati said, and rode Bonk back into the freezing water one last time. When he came close to the desperate remaining survivors, six grabbed his black horse instead of two. The added weight was too much for the exhausted beast, and it sank beneath the waves. Wonk's corpse was never recovered. Ultimati's body washed ashore with the others from the ship. Only 53 survived the wreck. Historians disagree on the original number aboard the ship, with numbers ranging from 270 to 190. They all agree that 14 of the survivors of the Young Tomas wreck owed their lives to Voltamate. The Dutch East India Company, perhaps more concerned with saving its cargo than the people, was relieved that boxes of money the ship had been carrying had already been removed from the Young Tomas prior to the storm. It provided for Voltamate's widow and remaining family. But their attitude seemed to be that the heroic man had brought death upon himself, venturing into the waves when he was warned to stay back. They named a ship, one of the trading ships called an East Indiaman of 1,100 tons burthen after him. The Eld Voltamade, or the Hero Voltamade, which was captured by the British on July 4th, 1781, during a battle in Saldana Bay, a battle of the Fourth Anglo-Dutch War. The British figure into the story of Voltamade again when South Africa operated as a constitutional monarchy under the British from 1910 to 1961. King George VI created the Union of South Africa King's Medal for Bravery, in June 1939 to recognize exceptional courage displayed by residents of the Union of South Africa in an attempt to save or attempt to save lives of others. It depicted the heroic act of Voltamade on its obverse. The medal continued to be awarded in some form until 2002. The held Voltamade was not the only ship to be named after him. Fittingly, a salvage vessel, a tug, one of the largest in the world, was named the S.A. Volrad Voltamade in 1976. A statue of him stands in Pinelands, a suburb of Cape Town, and the house that was said to be his, called Klein Zor, was established as a national monument in 1971. But outside of South Africa, almost no one seems to remember the name of the man who would not let wind and wave deter him. He gave his life to save the lives of others. Is there a better definition of a hero who deserves? To be remembered. If you enjoyed this History Guy short, then feel free to click that like button, subscribe to our channel, and check us out on Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and our merchandise on teespring.com.